So this week's project I wanted to be all about simplification. I'm going to start uh, with a demonstration of painting some simple objects and then um, guide you through a series of more complicated subjects, possibly building up to a face. I think this probably I'm going to be demonstrating painting, so this would suit painting, but you could also work with drawing materials and mixed media. So I've started with a lemon and a box. I'm going to begin with a lemon and um, I'm going to illustrate how I can look at this lemon with my eyes half closed and see two, possibly three colours and demonstrate that and encourage you to um, uh, take the same approach. The lemon's quite good because it's colourful, um, but it's only one colour. It's a plain colour. The box has got some writing, I'll, but I'll ignore the, the writing. Um, so a quick look at my palette uh, down here. So I've mixed for the lemon, I mixed some cadmium yellow and some lemon yellow. Uh, the middle color is, is the, the light color of the lemon. There's a little bit of highlight, which has uh, got more white in it and I think more lemon yellow. And then I actually just use um, brown, the burnt umber with the yellows to make a shadow colour and as I mix those colours I held a bit of it on the knife up against my lemon to see whether it's suited. I also, I'm showing you this now, but I also mixed a grey on my palette and I made some, uh, I mixed some burnt um umber, excuse me, uh, some burnt umber and some ultramarine <coughs> with some white to make a grey and I'm going to start my uh, painting demonstration with um, some grey. So let's do a fairly small lemon. So I want a bit of an outline. Hardly worth doing, really. Uh, so there's my outline, a bit of a shadow there. I'm going to carry on with the brush. So that, I think, you know, it's worth talking about size as well, scale. So that's probably half the size of the lemon itself. Um, I'm going to start with the shadow colour, but the, the, the key thing here is I'm trying to simplify uh, my lemon in terms of um, tone. Eyes half closed, I'll see a simple pattern of tone and um, also colour, which is why I've suggested a plain colour like a, uh, that of a lemon. Now there's all sorts of subtle things that I'm seeing, especially with my eyes open. Um, there's a little bit of reflected light under there um, as the light bounces off the mantelpiece. But I'm trying to ignore that. That's why I look with my eyes half closed. And I've just put on the pattern of uh, a, a shadow half to my lemon, a light half, and then there are these with the knobbly bit here, there are some other darker places. So that, I think that's that. Um, so I've cleaned my brush, and now I've mixed up a lighter colour. You see, I've got the paint on the tip of my brush. Do you see, that's the side of the brush. Uh, and this is going to be the light area. And initially, I don't really want these to mix because I want to keep that clean. I've picked up hairs and things as well, but the hairs are falling off my brush. Uh, so I'm keeping that clean. Um, a little bit more. Can I mix up enough paint? Uh, so that's a bit lighter there. And now I'm going to let some of them mix. So I'm using the brush. The important thing with this is I need to know what's on the end of the brush and if the colour is mixed then is that what I want or do I want it to be clean? If I do want it to be clean then I need to go, I need to wipe that brush. So there we are. There's my lemon with its light bit and its dark bit. I would defend myself by saying you're getting a slightly different view from me. So that line of shadow is a bit further around. Um, and then, as I said, I'd mixed up a little bit of a lighter colour, which 
So I've got to see. It's not quite so light now, but um, there is a bit of light here. So if I want that to be really light, I want to float that, sit on the surface. But if I'd like it to blend a bit more, because I think maybe that's, then I can mix it in a bit. But I'm keeping my brush on its side uh, to get that. to control that mixing. Uh, so I think the light's a little bit brighter here and I think there's a little bit of light up there as well. That comes around to there. So that's my simplifying the lemon. But of course I want to get in something of the background, a negative shape. So that's another chance to, to work on its form and if necessary cut in, change its shape slightly, but be aware again of what I've picked up. Have I picked up some paint? My lemon is probably not quite as pointy <clears throat> as I've painted it, but my demonstration is much more about simplifying colour. Haha, <laughs> what an excuse. Anyway, there we go. So that's just cutting in from the outside a negative shape. I'm just do, doing one background colour just to make that stand out. And it does, does help a bit. And then there is a shadow. So I'm making my simplification go as far as seeing the lemon as three colours a dark, a middle and a light and the, the background has just been two colours got my shadow grey there a little bit of a shadow underneath and because shadows have soft edges I'll let that blend a bit do better than that. So I've cleaned my brush because I just want to soften some of that shadow just with the brush. So there's my lemon, simplified. Um, I'll pause now and get ready to do the box. So next I'm going to have a go at the box and it's a white box, uh, well lit by light from the window, but rather than do white on grey or white and greys on grey, I've put it onto a blue background. Uh, I'll start again with the, actually no, what I was going to do was um, rub a bit of grey into the canvas surface. So rather than work on white this time, it might be quite useful just to get a bit of ground down. That can be quite good. So just a bit of spirit on the rag and rub a bit of grey in. So I'm doing a bit first with the brush, draw the box, and then I'll block in some colour with the um, with some bits of card. Now I hope you're still <laughs> I still I hope you're still on board because you might think lemons, boxes. But you know, last time we were doing dances and quite sophisticated things. But I want to take you through a series of steps. And I think if I can, um, if we start simple and hang on to some principles, then you can get more complex. Whereas if you start complex, it's very easy to say, oh well, didn't quite work, but never mind. Um, It'll do. So I'm trying to instill something slightly disciplined here. Uh, so there's my box. Do I get the job? Can I do boxes? Um, here's a bit of grey. So I'm going to put on my card this time. I'm on a... Oh, more excuses. I'm on a smooth surface here, so it's scratching it off. Um, Uh, 
get on with this. Uh, I'm also aware of the time. I don't want to spend hours and hour, take hours of your time. And I'm just going to be making excuses. That's ridiculous. So there's one plane. I mixed three colours, three tones. So for my box, we have a shadow side. I mixed orange and ultramarine. Then we have a light side over here. So I'm using the card because, again, I think the card is great for making you decisive. And as I've just tried to describe, if this exercise is going to work or, you know, have any, any benefit, then it's from forcing yourself to be very disciplined and not get by with, um, you know, half measures, as it were. It's got to be... Be quite strict about there's a light color there's a dark color and the top of my box is a little bit in between so that could be the world's most boring painting a gray box but just wait and see what happens if we put on it some negative shapes as I say the idea is to be decisive with the, the card is valuable for that. So I put it onto a blue background so that I can now paint a kind of negative shape. Shaky hand and so on. So just wondering when, I'll try a bit of the shadow color just so you can see that and then I'll pause it so that I'll finish it without you having to wait for me. Uh, some of that goes over there. I brought it down a bit lower, never mind. So I do think the value of the card is that it forces you to be decisive. Is it light? Is it dark? And that's it. Nothing, nothing in between. So my box is casting a bit of a shadow there. And also the box is not a bad subject because we've got these very sharp edges. You know, the, the lemon was soft edges. Um, so pause that while I finish this. Okay, so I've blocked in the, the negative shape. Not sure that my shadow actually is going in the right direction because I started off doing the... Um, I've got a kind of horizon line. Anyway... Um, so there we go, 13 minutes to paint a lemon in a box. Let's hope things get more exciting. But as I said, it's important to start with something straightforward and to make things more complex. So I'm off to find a shoe to uh, simplify, maybe a shoe just with one colour. Um, so what have I learned so far? You have to mix up plenty of paint. It wasn't a bad idea actually to stain this white surface so that it wasn't uh, too white, because I think that would have helped with my colours in the lemon. But that, that isn't the point. The point is to look at complex forms, three-dimensional forms, maybe complex colours and patterns, and to simplify them. And I've been attempting to make the object three colours, could be three tones, um, and the backgrounds two. So now I'm trying a shoe, a slipper. Um, I looked at various ones. There were boots that were too dark and trainers that had too many colours on. So this is one colour, more or less. Um, I tried to find an interesting angle, moved it around. I think that, that gives me um, some variety. It's not the, I'm not just looking at the side, which could be a bit flat. It's a bit more of a three-dimensional view. And I've put it onto some coloured card. So I'm going to start. And the scale again, this is this piece of paper here is a... Five, so actually I'm virtually doing A6. So scale is important, I think, to make this a satisfying exercise or satisfying task. I've stained the white surface as well. This is actually primed paper. 
um, watercolour paper that I've just primed with some emulsion. Uh, so it's a pretty smooth surface. Uh, I'm drawing out with the grey line and I'm going to pretend that the budget extended to enough yellow card to go all the way around it. Uh, there we go, so something like that. So I think what I'll do is I'll put on the background colour with some card and I might use my brush for the shoe. So let's get a bit of colour around the outside. So put on a few lines and now I'm just doing the negative shape. Seems to have stained it. Don't think much of the yellow. So I will have um, sent you an email with some images. There are some artists I've been looking at. Um, you see, really, I should change that yellow. Because I should be demonstrating to you what I think really matters. And I think if you make a colour and you think, no, that's the wrong colour, then just stop and remix it. Because this really, I mean, you might, I'm hoping you'll end up really enjoying this exercise because there's something mildly meditative about it. If you're very disciplined about getting exactly the right colour, reducing the background to a light colour and a dark colour, and dealing with an object that's relatively simple, or, you know, over the course of the week, making the subject a little bit more complicated each time, uh, then, I, then I think it'll be really worthwhile and satisfying, uh, which is why I'm saying it's not a bad idea to stop and remix the colour if it's not what you're after. Um, so I sh showed you um, a number of artists and I hope you might look them up again and you'll see things like what they've chosen to paint, uh, the views of the lemons or whatever it is. Uh, but they've been quite selective about uh, subjects that will, will suit them for this simplifying. So now I'm going to deal with the slipper. I've mixed three tones of a particular brown. Um, I look with my eyes half closed. This is the darkest tone. You see it's on the edge of my brush there, on the tip of the, the brush, so that I can get quite a lot of paint on and move it around. So I'm looking with my eyes half closed. The inside of the slipper is that dark tone. So I'll do that. And then with my brush, still, because there's, no, there's nothing's mixed yet, it's still quite clean. I'm just looking eyes half closed to see where else things are really dark. And this is, as I've uh, suggested, a more complex subject. Um, but I've had to still reduce it to three tones. So there are going to be difficult decisions. You know, what do I include? What do I leave out? Uh, I think this, I don't know what the words are for slippers, but the, this kind of ridgy bit that runs around the top of the front, that's important. Um, and maybe some of the base as well. So I don't know, I'll just have to see how it works. You'll have to see how it works uh, with your subject matter. But the best advice I can give is to look with your eyes half closed. I think it may well be that as we communicate during the week, one of the things I'm going to be helping with is colour mixing. You know, how do I make this colour and how do I reduce this particular subject just to three colours? Um, my slipper's got the extra complexity of the laces. But again, I look with my eyes half closed. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to do much to the laces. Just one or two of the dark bits, perhaps. Let's see, because I think I won't know really what to do next until I've blocked in the main colour. 
which is fairly dark. It's meant to be a sort of middle brown. So I'm getting it between the dark shapes that I've blocked in already. And it may be that I'll end up floating, floating the white. Not the white, the lighter colour. So I think there is something very satisfying about this. It's, in a way, it's objective, objective painting, trying to represent what's there, but in its most simplified form. And with oil paint as well, I suppose it's a, a good opportunity to, to practice in a way a, a, an economical sort of blocking in. So if you are the sort of painter who wants to paint eyelashes and fingernails, there's still a value in starting your paintings like this. Because in simplifying, you're forcing yourselves to work out what really matters, what's really important. So with all the different variations that I'm getting here, you know, on the front of that, this, um, the, the front of this slipper, you know, what really matters, it's a, you know, it's a kind of suede, so some of it is a bit worn and a bit darker, but those, that variation in the, the color of the, the suede itself doesn't really make any difference to me modeling the form of this shoe. I'm just trying to cover up some of the white bits there. So there is that stage. And then I'm, what I'm a bit unsure about is just the lighter color, which on my palette looks very light. Dark painting. So I'm just going to try this out. I think the lightest bits are maybe on the laces. I haven't got enough paint there. Could also have done that with a bit of card. I wonder. Anyway, let's just get a bit of lace on first. And the nice thing with oil paint is that can that can mix on the surface, but I've got to keep my brush or paint clean. So I've wiped my brush. I think I need to get some of this at the front as well. And maybe um, there could be a very fine edge. Maybe use the card. You know, there's a, a bit of an edge here that I can get with that card. And then, as I say, it gets more complicated. What do you put in? What do you leave out? But this is the exercise. I've got a bit of stitching there. I seem to think I can put in. Uh, maybe a bit along the edge there. Anyway, I think it's valuable if I make you limit yourself to... Uh, only three colours for the object and yeah uh, three colours for the object and two for the background um, and be strict about the colours so really what I should do and I'll pause here I should change my background colour and say I'm not satisfied with it so I've adjusted the background colour and I'm just reapplying it because I think, as I've suggested, if you take this as a real discipline where you don't put up with colours that you're not happy with, um, but also if you, you know, you, you're disciplined about three colours in the object and two in the background. Uh, I think it's really good preparation for getting onto more complex subjects, which will be next.
Uh, and even if you were, as I say, to be a, a painter of detail and more complicated or less simplified treatments, styles, um, this is the place to start with this general blocking in, simplified blocking in. Okay, so I'll pause that and um, finish the demonstration by, I think I'll set up a mirror and I'll have a go at uh, my reflection. Um, but I'm thinking that probably over the course of the week, if, if for Monday morning you could have a go at a lemon or a box, just get yourself started and then you can be thinking about what subject matter you want to work with. You might want to work with heads, figures, still lives, interiors, and uh, we can discuss that. And I can provide people with photographs if that's helpful, um, or you can, you can find those in, in your own home. So I'll make a start on uh, a head. I'm set up, I hope you can see it all. Um, I've put a mirror on the mantelpiece. I've got some light coming in from the window. I can look with my eyes half closed. I've stained the paper slightly, the surface, and I'll start with a bit of grey, bit of grey, just to sketch out. Why is that so dirty? Oh. Um, so the subject obviously is getting more complex. And my brush isn't very clean. The subject is getting more complex. So, you know, you've got to use your discretion. You get the eye, hopefully you get the idea of what I've been talking about, simplifying. Having a good pattern of light is useful. But as I look at <coughs> my head, it's against, it's against a wall, it's against a door. I'm just going to do one background colour. You'll see when it comes to painting the face, the skin, I'm going to have uh, three colours. A dark, which I'll use quite a lot in features, a light, a highlight, and then a sort of middle colour. <clears throat> and I won't get as far as doing a shirt, but then I would again try and do the drat pattern shirt, but I would try and do that with a um, with a uh, with two colours, that's right, a light colour and a dark colour. But as I say, you'll use your discretion uh, if you get the idea, which is simplifying. In a way, if I think of some of the things that you've been doing over the weeks, this isn't this would be a good way to start a portrait, a self-portrait or a portrait. But the sort of result I'm probably going to get to is not going to be a detailed Head, although if you try to, that would be fantastic. It's an, an amazing, uh, amazingly good discipline. Uh, it might be the sort of head that would have worked well with the dancers, you know, with a certain amount of modelling, a little bit of um, definition, but not much definition. Anyway, with the head, it's not a bad idea to start with the background. Maybe put on a bit of hair as well. No more excuses. Get a bit of hair in. Just some grey to start. And then probably. Uh, that was that one. Yeah, there you go. Then probably what I would do, given that it's oil paint and it's going to be wet, and that's what I want. Uh, I would maybe use my darkest tone first. I haven't checked these, so let's see. And I would use those for a little bit of painting of features. Ah, that's the wrong colour. Anyway, let's just do this as we might do it, because I really would like those to be a bit cooler. Anyway, I'm getting in some of the darks. Like that. What I see with my eyes half closed. And as I've described with the other examples, really the 
the right thing to do is to get get the colours down, see how they look, and then you'll be ready to adjust them. So this is what I made for a kind of shadow colour. It's very red. But then I have been in the sun a lot. Always need to be aware what's on your brush so that you can let the paint mix if you want it to. So that you can control the mixing. If you don't want it to mix, then you need to wipe the brush and pick up clean paint. And as I've probably said a few times, you really need good stocks of paint if this is going to work. So don't make do, but it's a fantastic exercise in asking yourself all the time what can I leave out what can I simplify and therefore what is essential and what actually isn't essential so if you leave out the non-essential stuff you'll have a much stronger painting looking with your eyes half closed taking your spectacles off is always a good idea that helps reduce the the variety and helps you identify what's um, essential. So I think that that is demonstrated reasonably well. I mean, there is the thing that, you know, with painting faces, I think there's more colour at the top of a face and with the light uh, such as it is. Uh, so I can actually let some of this muddy on my brush and then when I come to paint down here, perhaps not have such a uh, a clean colour. So if you like the idea isn't just to sort of divide your subject into three colours but to work a bit with the fact that the paint will stay wet and it will mix. So incorporate that that blending, that mixing into the, the process. So I want to get lots of light over here, that's for sure, a bit under the eye. But I would also probably want to bring that dark across, so I might go back to that. And some of this can come in here. So I probably have shown you really all that I want to demonstrate for this stage. I think what we need to do now is get you started on the simple forms, see how you get on. I suspect, as I said, some of the, our discussion might be about colour. How do I mix the, you know, how do I turn this into three colours? Um, and then it will be a case of deciding what more complex subject would you like to work with. So I think. Yeah, I'll leave that there. Uh, so our aim is simplification and have a good look at some of those artists. I've sent you one or two examples of um, three artists. Jason Long, who Kamachi told me about, actually, sh he was an artist who shared the prize winning podium with her when she went down to London. It's just before Christmas. Uh, and he does these wonderful simplifications, still lives. He's doing a lot of city city streets in lockdown out his window. Uh, and then, I can't remember the name of the other one, it's an American guy, somebody, Fair, Fairfax Portland Porter. Um, again, I just, I don't want to overload the email with too many, too many images, so I just send you one or two. But if you find them, uh, you could investigate a little bit more and hopefully they'll they'll consolidate the points that I'm trying to make okay jolly good so look forward to seeing your lemons and your boxes on uh, Monday lunchtime